ErcoPure Sodium Chloride Safety Training. Erco Worldwide is a leading producer and provider of specialized inorganic chemicals and is a leading developer and supplier of chlorine dioxide production technology. As the parent company of International Dioxide, Erco Worldwide has been in business for over a century and proudly upholds the reputation for excellence in delivering innovative, sustainable chemical solutions that improve lives and the health of our planet. Both International Dioxide and Erco Worldwide are responsible care companies and highly value the safety of each and every individual. This video contains crucial information about best practices for safe and successful handling, storage, and application of sodium chloride solutions. Base Safety Training and Hazard Identification Properties Sodium chloride is a preferred precursor for safe generation of chlorine dioxide and has been used commercially for over 75 years. Chlorine dioxide gas is unstable in concentrated form and is therefore generated at the point of application from concentrated precursors. Immediate dilution into the process being treated renders a safe and effective operation. Chlorine dioxide generators, as well as sodium chloride, have several beneficial applications, including disinfection of potable water, wastewater odor control, oil and gas biocidal applications, biocidal treatment of industrial process in cooling water, paper mill slimicide, and as a sanitizer and disinfectant in food and beverage applications. Hazards There are several potential hazards present in the shipping and storage processes related to the use of sodium chloride solutions. Sodium chloride solutions are shipped as a corrosive solution with a pH between 12 and 13. When handled and stored properly, these solutions are quite stable. Special care must be taken to avoid allowing sodium chloride solutions to spill or dry and form a white oxidizing powder. Be aware that if sodium chloride solutions ever react with organic materials, acids, or other stronger oxidizers, the chloride solution will quickly liberate chlorine dioxide gas. Chlorine dioxide gas is toxic and can be lethal at high concentrations. In rare instances, chlorine dioxide gas can explode if the concentration in air exceeds 10% or if the gas is compressed. Review your sodium chloride safety data sheet before working with or around sodium chloride solutions. Common incidents. The most common incidents involving sodium chloride happen as a result of the following actions. Improper or poorly implemented personal protective equipment. Improper transportation and handling. Allowing sodium chloride spills to dry, which changes the chemical state from a corrosive liquid to an oxidizer. Insufficiently rinsing empty sodium chloride containers. Offloading sodium chloride into the incorrect bulk tank. Adding sodium chloride to the incorrect drums or IBC totes and storing sodium chloride with incompatible materials. Personal protective and safety equipment. Sodium chloride can react with any organic materials it comes in contact with, including objects like leather boots, cotton clothing, and sneakers. Sodium chloride is especially harmful to the unprotected human body. It is therefore crucial that anyone working with or around sodium chloride solutions wears the correct protective equipment in order to prevent bodily injury. The correct personal protective equipment, or PPE, for handling sodium chloride solutions is as follows. Rubber boots, a neoprene suit or jacket, or an approved equivalent, with clasps on the inside, and outer buttons fastened up to the wearer's neck to prevent liquid from penetrating into clothing. If a neoprene jacket is worn instead of a suit, 
neoprene pants should also be worn. Suit or pant legs should overlap and cover the rubber boots. Rubber gloves should be worn and covered by jacket or suit sleeves to prevent the solution from running into the gloves and contacting the skin. Lastly, always wear protective safety goggles and a hard hat with a face shield. Before working with or near sodium chloride, perform the following checks to ensure you're prepared for safe operation, regulatory compliance, and potential emergencies. Ensure a safety shower and eye wash station are nearby and that there is sufficient water pressure and flow from each. In the event that you become contaminated with sodium chloride, we recommend you step in the safety shower, wash down completely, remove all clothing, and keep it wet until properly disposed. If you suspect sodium chloride may have gotten in your eyes, use the eye wash station for at least 20 minutes and seek medical attention. Check that bulk storage tanks meet the minimum labeling requirements, including labels for chemical name, capacity, and UN 1908. Secondary containment must support at least 110% capacity of the largest tank it contains and must not contain incompatible chemicals. Ensure the unload connection point is locked and clearly identified with the UN 1908 label. Acceptable bulk tank construction is fiberglass reinforced plastic or HDPE. All other construction materials must be reviewed with the manufacturer for compatibility with sodium chloride solutions. Lastly, piping should be PVC Schedule 80 or CPVC. Metal piping is susceptible to corrosion and is not acceptable for sodium chloride usage. ERCO performs a bulk tank assessment prior to your first bulk delivery. If desired, ERCO will send a customer bulk tank kit with all necessary product, tank, and pipe labels, and locks to help ensure safe unloading and storage of sodium chloride solutions. If you have any questions about safety equipment or procedures, contact ERCO for fast and reliable support. Part 2. Handling Truck Loading ERCO and International Dioxides facilities are specially outfitted for safe production, use, and transportation of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride solution is most often transported by 316 or 316L stainless bulk tank trucks. While loading procedures may vary between sites, it's crucial for every loading site to follow their truck loading procedure with extreme caution. The following is an example of one truck loading procedure. After checking in with site security, the truck should arrive at the loading dock and show papers proving the truck has been thoroughly washed clean at a certified truck wash. The driver should position the truck under the loading rack and turn off the truck entirely. The truck driver and any involved personnel should ensure they have proper PPE and functioning safety equipment before beginning the loading process. The driver must not leave the truck cab while wearing normal street clothes, as this puts them at risk of contamination and severe injury. Once the driver is in the proper PPE, they may be asked to assist in the loading process. If a platform is not available, drivers should be prepared to safely climb to the top of the trailer to assist with loading. To prepare the loading site, barricades should be set up to prevent any other vehicles from entering the premises. Wheel chocks should be placed on the truck to prevent the truck from rolling during loading or unloading. Next, an operator along with site personnel will inspect the trailer to ensure everything is in order before sodium chloride can be safely loaded. A product check is then completed to ensure the correct product is about to be loaded. After the gangway is lowered and the dome lid opened, a final check of the trailer must be completed to ensure it is clean and all valves are in the closed position and capped off. All process valves on the loading equipment, including the valve on the load arm, should be opened prior to beginning the loading process. This ensures there will be no unwanted pressure differential on the loading piping and pump. After carefully making these preparations, loading may safely begin and the trailer should be filled to the desired amount. After the desired level is reached, the pump is stopped 
and the loading process valves are shut. Remove the load arm or hose from the trailer. Close the dome lid firmly and secure it with tamper-proof seals. Now that the sodium chloride has been loaded, the truck is ready for a series of important travel preparations. Truck Traveling Once the truck has been safely loaded, wheel chocks and barriers are removed. The truck will be weighed out, and proper identification placards must be placed on the truck. Sodium chloride's unique identification placard is 1908, and all sodium chloride shipments must clearly display this placard. Before the truck leaves the loading site, final documentation and clearance papers must be issued. Once clear of the possible loading area of contamination, the truck driver should place the papers in a sealed compartment on the body of the tanker, as well as in the door of the cab. In the event of an accident, these papers are highly important to an emergency response team. Finally, the driver should walk around their vehicle to carefully check once more that the load is secure and the truck is mechanically fit for travel on public highways. During the delivery trip, drivers should periodically inspect their vehicle to ensure the safety and integrity of the load. If an issue is spotted or the driver has any concerns, they should contact Canutech if in Canada or Chemtrek if in the United States. Truck Unloading it's critical to be aware that sodium chloride is often mistaken as sodium hypochlorite when arriving at a customer site. Offloading sodium chloride into a sodium hypochlorite tank or other tank with organic or acidic materials may result in a planned evacuation or tank explosion and must be avoided by carefully adhering to the following steps. Upon reaching its destination, the truck driver should check in with site security and approach the unloading point with all necessary documents. The driver must present the customer with documents declaring what product is being delivered, and the customer should acknowledge acceptance of the product by signing the documents. Prior to unloading, the driver and any involved personnel must ensure they are wearing proper PPE and that all equipment is functioning correctly. Next, the driver should inspect the site to locate the site's eyewash and safety shower. Then ensure the offloading area is up to standard for safe unloading. The customer and driver should both note the fill line for sodium chloride and inspect the condition of the receiving tank in order to confirm there is adequate space to receive the entire new shipment volume. It may be necessary to follow the fill line piping from its very beginning all the way to the tank to ensure sodium chloride is being received into the proper storage tank. Next, the customer should provide the driver with a key for the UN1908 lock located on the fill line. To prepare the unloading site, barricades should be set up to prevent any other vehicles from entering the premises. Wheel chocks should be placed on the truck to prevent it from rolling during unloading. After preparing the premises, the driver should provide a sample to the customer. The customer may perform tests on the sample to confirm the quality of the product prior to unloading. These samples are typically marked and retained in a safe storage area for future use. Once the customer confirms that the product is acceptable, the driver may begin hooking up the unloading hoses and equipment. Once hooked up, the driver should double-check all connection points to confirm they are secure. To prevent even a small amount of sodium chloride from contaminating the ground, catch basins or buckets should be placed beneath the connection points. The driver should verbally confirm whether the customer is familiar with how to shut off the equipment in case of emergency and clarify any safety-related questions or concerns the customer may have. During unloading, the driver should remain at or nearby the shutoff valve. Once unloading is complete, buckets and spill pads should remain in place until all lines are disconnected and capped and valves and hoses are plugged and stored. Following unloading and cleanup, wheel chocks and barriers are removed and paperwork should be finalized. Storage, handling, and disposal. Many customers require 55-gallon HDPE drums or intermediate bulk container, known as IBCs or totes, for their applications. IBCs consist of a plastic liner enclosed in a steel frame that protects the container from hazards and provides structural support. 
IBCs with a capacity of 275 or 330 gallons are commonly used for sodium chloride storage and handling. As a precaution, drums or IBC totes are filled and securely closed using a torque wrench to prevent accidental opening due to handling or vibration. Fill caps are then sealed to ensure tampering has not occurred between the time of filling and when the customer opens one for use. When transported by a forklift or hand truck, IBCs and drums must be kept at a low level to decrease the likelihood of a drum falling and sustaining damage that may result in a hazardous event or lost product. The safest way to ship drums is to load no more than four drums to a pallet. The drums are filled, their caps should be tightened and sealed, and all four drums should be banded together to make a secure package. Each drum should be affixed with an outward-facing label for quick identification of the product and its hazards. Drum pallets should never be stacked more than too high. This will prevent the stack from becoming top-heavy or placing too much weight on the bottom layer, which can lead to damage to ruptured drums. In case of a drum or IBC rupture, the compromised container should promptly be placed within secondary containment to allow the sodium chloride to drain into a controlled space. As the ruptured container is placed into secondary containment, any spilled solution must immediately be cleaned up by personnel trained to safely respond to spills. Personnel who attend to the spill should put on appropriate PPE before doing so. Once the failed container is completely drained, the contained material should be collected in an approved plastic container and properly disposed of. The failed container and secondary containment should be thoroughly washed down with water to avoid any drying of the sodium chloride solution. Captured solution, as well as any exposed incompatible material, should be disposed of according to local regulations. If you're unsure of your local regulations, contact ERCO for assistance. Note that sodium chloride is toxic to aquatic species and should not be released to open streams and rivers. Summary Let's recap all safety information covered in our safety video series. Sodium chloride is a corrosive solution. It's crucial to wear personal protective equipment when working with sodium chloride solutions. Keep sodium chloride solutions away from combustible materials, acids, and organic materials. If a spill occurs, contain spilled solutions and clean up immediately, followed by plenty of rinse water to dilute residual material. Do not allow spilled sodium chloride solutions to evaporate or dry and leave a white powder residue on surfaces, as this will change its chemical state to an oxidizer and become highly combustible. Do not allow contaminated clothing to dry, as it will become highly flammable. Remove contaminated clothing immediately, soak with water, and launder if the exposure is minor. If the contaminated clothing exposure is significant, soak with water and properly dispose. Depending on its material, some contaminated PPE can be thoroughly rinsed and reused. Adhere to your loading or unloading site's safety guidelines and procedures carefully, and always follow local regulations for disposal. Only water is capable of putting out a sodium chloride fire. Never smoke in a sodium chloride workplace. ERCO and International Dioxide care deeply about the safety of our customers. Our friendly and knowledgeable support experts are happy to assist you with any questions or issues regarding the safe and successful use of sodium chloride. To learn more about ERCO Worldwide and International Dioxide, reference the contact information on your screen or visit ERCOWorldwide.com or call 1-800-477-6071.